A secret nobody tells you is that developers don't code 100% of the time. And in some companies we've worked at, it's not even 50. And not just because of our suspiciously long lunch breaks. Developers use many other programs besides their beloved IDE. Let's see how they should be used correctly across a lifetime of a task in the industry, from start to finish. A task is firstly created by the product manager, usually done in Monday, or Jira, which are the market leaders, or Trello, which is a smaller free alternative, perfect for game jams. But for the purpose of this video, let's go with Jira. Our job as programmers is to translate correctly the product manager's vision, also known as user stories, into small, simple dev tasks. So each task will be the smallest deliverable unit. For instance, converting a double jump mechanic task into implement a jump after a button press, define a condition for when the second jump is possible, and move the double jump configuration into a scriptable object. Come on, why make things complicated? Double jump is a tiny task, which doesn't need inner subtasks. Shut up, Epi. This separation has plenty of advantages. We can give time estimations more accurately. We are forced to design our implementation ahead, leading to fewer panic moments later. And there's one more advantage we'll encounter soon. To achieve proper division into subtasks and reasonable time estimations, we have the design phase, which can be done in Confluence, Notion, or Miro. Confluence is our favorite, and it's free. Here, we'll define our code architecture, create UML diagrams, and consult with the team on issues. Now that we see the full picture, we can break down our subtasks the right way. And before we dive into coding, there's one last thing. Connecting the tasks to our source control. Git is the world standard for project source control, for a good reason. It lets us easily back up our project in the cloud, jump back to each point in our project's history, and most importantly, work in parallel with multiple developers on the same project. Since Git can only be used through the command line, over the years, many applications were created to provide a nice user interface to it. And our favorite one is Fork, which again, is free. So in Fork, we'll create a dedicated branch for our current task, with its corresponding Jira ID for good order. Now finally, we can start coding. Integrated development environments, aka IDEs, are the programs we write code in. Aside from coffee, the IDE is the developer's best friend. So make sure you master its strengths and stay updated on its latest tricks. The top IDEs which are suitable for Unity are JetBrains Writer and Microsoft's Visual Studio Code, which both are free. Out of these two eternal rivals, Writer took the win as the industry standard and also as our personal favorite. We highly recommend checking out our full video on one of its advantages. After countless attempts to bind our IDE to Unity, they ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into we it. We can at last write our writers. code. And when we're done, upload our changes for review in our chosen remote source control. In many companies, you just open a big pull request with all the subtasks changes, but that can become a nightmare for the poor developers reviewing our changes. They'll have to waste extra time figuring out how everything connects leading to less focus and ultimately more chances for bugs. So, a much more polite solution, which leverages our subtask separation, is to create a dedicated branch for each subtask we created earlier. And at the end of each one, open a small convenient pull request into the previous subtask. This way, each pull request is self-contained and delivers a single change. And of course, once they are all approved and merged into our base branch, we can merge it into our main branch. Just to be clear, this is an oversimplified example, but in an average task, this technique is a game changer. Trust us. Though a team member isn't the only one needed to approve our changes, continuous integration and continuous delivery, better known as CICD, are two automated steps that let us break things with reckless confidence. The CI step involves running automated tests on our code, like checking with unit tests that we didn't break any logic, overviewing our code with linters or GitHub actions to find potential issues and coding standards violations, or in our field of gaming, running a bot that will automatically play our game until it reaches a certain level. At our first company, this bot caught 10% of our bugs, saving time for our QA to advance in their ping pong skills. 
After the CI step is passed successfully, we can merge our pull request. And the continuous delivery step, also known as continuous deployment, builds our game automatically to all desired platforms. Jenkins is the industry's standard for that, mainly because it's reliable and free. Though specifically for gaming, there's an awesome CI project created by the game dev community, which is dedicated for Unity, and it's free as well. So we've covered our core tools, and we've learned what a proper dev cycle looks like. But as we all know, the serious gamers also master the DLCs. Most games have a backend server supporting them. So knowing how to send API requests via Postman, or managing your game data using Firebase, can give you a serious advantage. Ever since AI Assistant came out, a big part of our job has become choosing which AI to use and when to rely on traditional resources. And it may sound funny, but companies are looking for that skill in their candidates. To sum it up, being a Unity developer involves much more than meets the eye. So we hope you now have a deeper understanding of its hidden sides, and we can't wait to share the advanced Unity topics we've prepared in the next episode. Enjoyed the video? Share it with your friends, and show us that love with a thumbs up and subscribe. And thanks a lot for watching. We hope to see you soon in another Practic API video.